Crystal Joy and welcome to my YouTube channel. I am an actress, writer, and founder of Blue Room Productions. I post vlogs, behind the scenes commentary on my projects, and my films. But before this video was over, make sure you hit the like, subscribe, and the bell button to stay up to date. So in today's video, I will be talking about the short film documentary that I made, Josie to the World. So last year, I made a project called Josie to the World. Josie is another word for Johannesburg. And it is a short form documentary about myself and the journey that I've been on becoming this founder, this multi-hyphenate badass filmmaker. The road I have taken that has gotten me to where I am today and what got me to Johannesburg. It was something magical about Josie to the World because I was able to bring my current circumstances to the camera. It was such a fun shoot because I really got to explore Johannesburg more, but once again, I did it in front of the camera and Josie to the World was a beautiful reflection of that journey. So we shot in Mabonang and we shot in Rus Luros, which I know I butchered. <laughs> As you can see, I'm not good at pronunciation. When we went to the other townships, that was my first time in that area. And so I was able to talk with the locals. I was able to, you know, just form a bit of a dialogue with them. And once again, just using your environment and using what's around you. Now, mind you, we didn't have a lot of equipment. We didn't have a big crew. It was only four of us all together, including myself. We shot in the apartment that I was staying in, and then everything else was exterior shots. A one camera shoot with a bunch of cell phones. That's honestly what it was. Once again, it was just this beautiful moment of an indie film, gorilla type of shoot where you don't need a bunch of money to make it work. You don't need a bunch of high tech equipment. I'm sure the quality would have came out differently if we had that. But at the same time, think about when you have all this equipment, you have to load and unload. And that takes time. You know, it was just our bodies and what we had in our hands. There was no mic. There was no lavalier. There was a reflector and a few other pieces of equipment, but that was it, you know? So we were able to move at a very quick pace because we didn't have a lot of equipment to load and unload. I've said it before and I'm gonna keep saying it, work with what you have. Work with what you have. You know, it's something about not totally having everything planned out and just going with the flow that makes things work. In order to go with the flow, you also have to be with the right people to do that. And so whenever I have used that approach to making my projects, I was with the right people. When I've planned things out to the T is when I've had the most problems. <laughs> And I don't know how that ends up happening. It just does. I'm not even gonna try and dissect it or figure it out. It's interesting because I wrote down, I had wanted to create a project in Johannesburg. And for a second, I didn't think it was gonna happen. But then the opportunity presented itself. And I thought to myself, oh, this is really happening. <laughs> the film industry is, any kind of industry like this, whether it's music industry, film industry, is mainly, dominated by men. And so when you're working on a set of all women, we all share very similar experiences. When I have worked on all female sets, there is an automatic understanding of the next woman's struggles because we share and swap a lot of the same stories. When I tell you this is a universal thing of women having to work so hard and go to such great lengths to prove themselves as filmmakers, it really is a universal message and a universal issue. It's 
not just here in the state. And South Africa, from how it was explained to me, has not really caught up yet to the Me Too movement. You're hearing about it, there's conversations that are happening, there's not a lot of implementation of certain rules or changes. Hire women on your sets. Don't do it just because you think it's cool, but do it because women bring a certain level of sensitivity to their creativity. We have an innate creativity built within us, and I really do think it's grounded in our intuition. It's grounded in our emotions and our tenderness and our femininity. And I'm not talking about just hair and makeup or accounting or as a PA. I'm talking about hire women in key positions on your sets. Don't be afraid if you have to take a direction from a woman. There's nothing wrong with that. Check your ego and you'll be fine. Is, is her hair laid? Like your hair looks that good. You mean to tell me you came to my country and you did your hair and it looks this great. And I still am struggling to find a hairstylist in Johannesburg. Wow. Wow. God has favorites. Oh my gosh. Wow. Okay. I'm kidding. So I think my first reference is the fact that I was collaborating with women who um, inspired me primarily because of the fact that sometimes I can be a little bit fearful um, of myself and my own personal endeavors. And here I was um, confronted with the women who were ready to take the bull by the horns. And I remember very clearly when I was bringing up the idea of the idea that maybe we should shoot something. For me, it was quite astounding to watch you leave a continent, come to a new continent um, by yourself <laughs> and just do what you wanted to do. Um, so I think my experience with you, Crystal, was the reason why I came across this idea of bravery, um, but also because I just, I wanted to use the opportunity to tell the story of what black South African experience really looks like. Um, so for, for some people, what might seem like a harrowing experience for us is a day-to-day -day lived experience and there's nothing special about it. One thing that did stand out for me though was this idea that you were traveling alone. I couldn't believe that. That is actually what shook me because I've always been so scared of like going outside of the country as just on my own or I've always had this idea that if you're a woman and you want to travel you have to have someone with you. Um, but to see you just doing it on your own was really shocking to me and I remember you being in the taxi for one of the scenes that we shot and you were just getting along with these taxi drivers that you literally just met and I thought that is amazing like so it is possible as a black woman you can go to a foreign country and it can be beneficial for you like just how genuine brave and warm you were um i think those were my impressions of you some of sometimes when the media is trying to create a certain interpretation of africa there's one um one kind of africa that gets painted right and even if that kind of africa has evolved beyond mud huts and wild animals i think there's a certain level of nuance that is still missing and I am no longer waiting for media outlets to tell us, to tell that story about us. I'm excited to be a young content producer who is living in Africa because we are now being put in a position where we can tell our stories for ourselves. And I think what we're now finding is that if we can just tap into the international distribution market, if we can just tap into the international market, if we can just tap into all the potential that globalization has brought to the fore, 
It's very possible for us to tell our own stories with the level of nuance and delicacy that we need to tell those stories with. There's so much that is constantly changing in the context of Africa. And I think that there is a lot that's happening specifically in the Southern African region that is really exciting and is really fresh and is really new. And there's so many opportunities. And I think that we as Africans first have to learn to take advantage of those opportunities before someone else comes onto our backyard again and takes advantage of, the, of those opportunities. Well, I don't really want to rely on this idea of the media having a responsibility to represent me. I think that sometimes that's not always the best thing. Yeah. I am actively going to be seeking out archetypes. So if I'm not happy with the kinds of um, artists I'm seeing being promoted or the kind of artists that I'm seeing get a lot of attention or spotlight, I'm going to actively seek out um, different artists that I want to consume, that I believe in because um, it's, it's really dawned on me that while there is so much content that is um, being created and then and, and, and produced at this time not all of it is valuable to it to you and some of it is not even going to get to you because that's just how much um, video content is being put out um, in today's age so I definitely would love to see a lot more Afrofuturistic text. I know it's not a new word. I know we have had um, a lot of different works that have come out before, but I would like to see that going forward in the future. That would be really fun. I think that would be exciting. Um, I thought it was really refreshing to come across a person who wasn't coming to Africa to come and try to, I don't know, escape whatever was going on in the United States or meet someone who was truly invested in the culture. And by invested in the culture, I'm talking about not just going the normal tourist routes, but someone who was invested in coming in and, and learning some of our culture. I think for me, I took to it because I am a very open person generally. So to come across someone else who was as open as Crystal Joy is, was a real pleasure because it made it so easy to communicate and to understand each other, not from the perspective of our historical differences or similarities, but to understand each other as human beings who are having a human experience and who are living in a place and in the world and in a time that is changing. There's so much change that's happened in the past, what, five years of the world's existence. It takes a certain level of curiosity for a person to go into a different place and then completely immerse themselves in that and I thought that was so commendable um, we often have so many Africans and South African young women who immigrate to new parts of the world but it was really refreshing to come across someone who did a, didn't engage or interact with us from a place of privilege um, which sometimes, you know, people tend to treat tourists with an air of privilege. It was nice to come across someone who was authentically invested in finding out what the real African story is, what the nuance is, and what it's like to be African outside of what, you know, traditional news media portray us, portrays us as. Um, we have a lot to offer. And I think we're tapping into that. And I think the more that we're tapping into that, the more we are able to walk into certain rooms with a certain level of boldness. It's only just refreshing when you walk into a room with a certain level of boldness and there's someone there to receive you with just as much warmth as you would given any other visitor. You know, there's a lot of people who are gonna oversell or who are going to want to glamorize this idea of now us wanting or, or now you know a, a large majority of the world wanting to see what Africans are producing but I think that you know these things that we produce will never be uh, a, a replacement for reality you know they will never be a reflection of reality they will always be a representation of an idea 
And so the idea of what it means to be African or even South African, to say the least, you would have to come here and experience it with me. You would have to be on the ground to understand anything or to even begin to want to understand. So one thing that came about for me was surrender to the process because, okay, while I did enjoy uh, making um, Josie to the world, it wasn't exactly a pleasant experience for me because specifically in the editor's room, I was going through what I felt like at the time was somewhat of a writer's block and i was so frustrated and every time that i would actually sit down to work on the edit i would be at odds with that feeling that i was going through and another thing with small budget filmmaking is that sometimes you can have an idea and you can see it so clearly in your mind but then because of your limited resources uh, you realize that you might not be able to achieve the thing that you had initially wanted to do. So do you then give up or, you know, do you just discard the idea or do you, you know, become malleable like water and learn to adapt to the situation, learn to uh, trust the process, surrender to it, and have faith that if you do put in the work, you're going to see something beautiful. Maybe not the exact thing that you were aiming to create, but something that's worth being looked at. So those were the lessons. Um, surrender to the process, but most importantly, trust the process. What some people might not know is that Josie to the World was birthed out of real impulse. And I think that's what comes with bravery. If you are brave enough to just secure yourself, brave enough to trust the team that you're working with, um, brave enough to make your suggestions based on whatever it is that you're trying to work on, and brave enough to take the plunge, say, that your story is something that's worthy to be told and to be seen and that you want to take the whole process through and actually get it to see the light of day. I think that an, in and of itself is a process of bravery. I think any kind of filmmaker or storyteller is already somebody who's incredibly brave because of the fact that they want the world to see their story. And I think that Josie to the World helped show me of that, that if I just come out and say whatever idea I have, no matter how impulsive or impossible it might seem, sometimes someone might be crazy enough to take the plunge with me. And sometimes that means that, you know, we get to end up having a really good story being told, I think. I feel very blessed because I've had the opportunity of capturing myself in these pivotal moments in my life on camera. And that's something that I want other Black Americans to see. I want them to see that. You know, I really want to make these types of projects so other Black Americans can go to the continent and experience it for themselves. And right now, we're starting to see a collective consciousness of Black people kind of waking up and understanding how important Africa is to who we are. Storytelling is such a powerful tool and with social media and all these different platforms that help and encourage filmmakers to put their work out there and get more exposure, now is such a perfect time to send this message out to the world. It's time for us to control the narrative and through my work. I just want to show Africa in the way that I've experienced it, not through Western society's eyes, not through their lens, but through a more truthful lens. And I think seeing African American there will only inspire others to go and experience it for themselves come up with their own conclusions, with their own ideas, by putting their feet on the soil. 
And this just makes me excited of what's to come because there is so much more to come. So I really hope you all enjoyed this video. Please leave your comments in the comment section. I would love to read them and share this video with your friends too. spread the word. But thank you all so much for tuning in today and do not forget to hit the like, subscribe and the bell button and I will see you next week.